So you're thinking about becoming your own bank. Well, if you're gonna be the bank, you gotta think as if you're the bank. And if you're the bank, you're probably looking at how does the bank limit its risk? What should the bank not do? These are some very valid points that I wanna talk about today. So if you wanna be the bank, well, then these are some of the things that you certainly need to avoid. You know, I've had to learn this and some of it I've had to learn the hard way. You know, when I first started becoming the bank, it was simple for me. All I wanted to do was take back control of the banking functions in my life, starting with the debts. I had a lot of debt. I don't know how many of you have debt, but that's a great starting place. So all I did is I identified all the people that I was paying a check to every month. Not just people, but banks. What banks were getting a check from me every single month? And once I identified them, how do I take that money back? Because if I'm gonna take back the banking functions, well then I can't be giving checks every single month to their bank, it should be going to my bank. That's where I started. And I learned the good and the bad of doing that. And here's some of the things you must avoid. And one of those is it's very easy to start your banking policy, okay, the whole life policy, the specially designed whole life, take a loan from the policy immediately in the first 30 days and pay off a credit card and be like, all right, getting there. I paid off my debt, I'm good, I don't owe that credit card anymore, woo! But then you forget the most important part, the recycle and recapture. If you paid the credit card off, you no longer owe the check to the bank, their bank, so what do you gotta do? You gotta pay that check back to your bank. So I'm just gonna draw it for you. So over here, if this is your bank, B-Y-O-B, and over here, is the credit cards that you're going to pay off on this side, so it doesn't matter. What we wanna do is we wanna transfer from our bank to pay off their bank, okay? So what we do is we take a loan from the policy, and a lot of you don't like this. You're like, oh, I don't wanna more, I don't wanna take a loan to pay off a loan. Listen, this loan, even though they charge right around 5%, is the insurance company giving you part of your debt benefit. They're loaning you money from their general account, subtracting the loan from your debt benefit. So if you died the next day, yes, it'd be less, it'd be less whatever the loan is, but because it's a loan against the debt benefit, it technically doesn't ever have to be paid back until the day you die. But that's not what we're gonna do because that would be stealing from your bank. So just like I was saying before, we took a loan from our bank, we paid off their bank, so we no longer owe that credit card, let's call it $100 a month, and we were giving them 20% annual. So now you're super pumped, you paid the credit card off. What we gotta do then is take this $100 a month, recycle and recapture it, so we wanna recycle it back into our bank, the $100 a month payment, which is equivalent to 20% interest you were giving away. By recycling it back into your policy, what you're doing is you're reducing the loan. So the loan balance is going down by all the payments that you're recapturing. So you see what I'm saying? So you use the loan from your bank to pay off their bank. Then you take back the $100 you paid to them. This is one of the most important things and this is one of the biggest things people don't do. They steal from their bank. They take the loan, because that's easy. I got my money over here. I take the loan immediately. I pay off the credit card. Then they party like it's 1999, like some victory has been won, but you see it hasn't. Because just because you paid the credit card off doesn't mean anything. You have not taken back the banking functions in your life until you recapture the $100 you were giving away and put it back here. Now here's the coolest part. When you do this, the $100 a month that you put back into policy as a loan repayment, that money's available the next day. Try that with your credit card. Try paying $100 in interest to your credit card and then asking them for the $100 back. No way. Now, I know some of you are like, yeah, but if I paid $100 toward principal, no, I'm talking about the interest, the 20% interest you're giving away. And by doing this, now you've got an extra $100 over here every month, $1,200 a year, that we then can take out a loan and pay off the next one and the next one. And as you do this, every time you're just stacking, you're stacking the money you were giving away and you're adding it back to the money your bank keeps. So that's one of the most important things. Do not steal 
from your bank. If you're gonna be the bank, think as if you are a bank. And also, one other thing I'd like you to think as if, there's more videos than just this one by clicking the subscribe button. And also there's a little bell up top, smash, ouch. Wow, I hit this table. Yeah, so let's get back into it. So also, one of the other things you want to avoid is if you're going to be the bank. Now, forget about paying off credit cards. Let's talk about lending money because that's what banks do, right? Banks lend money. They don't just pay, you know, your bank can pay off your credit card, but banks lend money. But do they just lend money to anyone? No. So one of the things you must avoid is just thinking that the return is all that matters. So many people see a big return, a big interest rate, and they lend to that thinking, oh, that's such a big return. And you know what the biggest loss you'll ever take is? Not getting your money back. So when a bank makes a loan and that loan doesn't pay and they lose that, that's the biggest loss and your bank is no different. So when you're going to lend money, and I'll just pick on private money club like I drew here, privatemoneyclub.com. It's a lending site. Basically, it's, it's a dating site for money. People with money meet people that need money and they lend on real estate. So if you go to privatemoneyclub.com and you're looking through all the deals on there, and there's some really good deals and you're looking to lend some money. So let's just say over here, get rid of some of this, your bank's got, oh, let's call it a hundred grand, okay? Doesn't matter if you're there or not. And then you're like, I want that hundred grand to earn a little bit more interest than what the insurance company pays me. So you go on Private Money Club, you find a deal over here and it says 18%. But you look at it and then it says second position, it says 36 months, and it says, I don't know, development. So right there, there's a couple things that I see that would scare me. Okay, first off, I see 36 months. That's a long time. For me, that is. Maybe for you it's not, but I like lending out 12 months or less because things change in the economy, things change in the entire real estate world. So if I'm gonna lend out for 36 months, I definitely don't wanna be in second position. So two things, term and position. So if I'm in second position, I wanna know who's numero uno. Just like Talladega Nights, like Ricky Bobby's dad said to him, he said, son, if you're not first, you're last. What's well, kind of like that in banking too. If you're gonna lend money, you kind of want to lend in first position. But then at the end of the movie in Talladega Nights, his dad was walking down the center of the road and he said, you know, Ricky said, dad, I lived my whole life thinking first was the only choice. And his, his father's like, son, man, I never said that, man. There's second place, third place, fourth place. Hell, there's even fifth place. Ricky was so confused because he only knew first place. Kind of like me, I'm Ricky. I only want first place. So I'm not saying there's anything wrong with second place, but know who's in first. Because if it's a bank in first place, they're probably not gonna leave much room for you to get your money back. So in lending 36 months on a development deal with no promised exit or no real plan of an exit that's materialized yet, you're doing that in a second lien position, the risk is too much. In other words, as Mr. Brent Kessler would say, the juice isn't worth the squeeze. So lesson of what not to do here is do not take excessive risk just because it's a higher return. The biggest risk you can take is not getting your money back. Always remember that. In being your own bank, there's one other thing that I always tell people that you wanna really avoid. This is a bad one. A lot of times if you're gonna lend money, the person you're lending to will say, okay, great, we've got a deal, because maybe you've gone through the terms, you're in first or whatever position you wanna be in, everything looks great, you're ready to go. And the borrower says, okay, just send the money or just wire the money to my account. And you're just like, okay, and you wire the money to their account. Before the deal closes, before the mortgage is recorded and filed, and before the whole thing is closed. Do you realize how much risk you just took? Now, let me ask you this. If you're going to be the bank and you're gonna think as if you're the bank and you're gonna mimic a traditional bank, how many times have you ever had a bank give you money before the lien was recorded? Like, how many times has the bank given you a loan for a car or for a house before they filed a lien on the title? Hmm? Seriously, like, it's a real question. Have they ever done that? Has have you, the bank ever given you a loan and handed it to you before you, and, and you just say, okay, no problem, Mr. or Mrs. Bank. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go buy the car and I'm gonna make sure they put you 
on the title in a lean position. Cool? You trust me? Hell no, the bank doesn't trust you. Bank's like, nope, we're gonna hold the money in escrow and then you're gonna go do the deal with the dealership. The dealer is gonna call us. The dealer is gonna show that the lien has been recorded. Then we will send the money, not to you. We'll send it to the dealership where you're buying the car, or we'll send it to the brokerage or the title company where the house is being closed. So one lesson, if you're gonna be the bank, do not send money directly to a borrower before the deal closes. Always use a third party escrow agent or escrow company, could be an attorney, could be a title company. And let me go one step further. Have you ever closed on a loan with the bank without having the bank's attorneys review it? Nope, matter of fact, the bank charges you for their attorney, especially in a mortgage. Yeah, it's a line item. So if you are the bank and you are lending money, always have an attorney review everything especially if they're not your documents. So those are three really important things that you must avoid if you're going to be the bank. Because if you don't avoid those, you are putting yourself in harm's way. You're putting yourself in a place where you could potentially fail. And if you remember them, recycle and recapture was the first point I made. Don't just take money from your bank, pay off somebody else's bank, and then forget to recapture the money back into your bank. That's key. You gotta take back, take back the banking functions in your life. The second thing we talked about was risk, falling victim to the big fancy interest rate, the big you know, FOMO interest rate. Don't do that. Always look at the deal. Make sure the deal checks the boxes for your parameters for what you wanna lend on. And only lend on things you know, like, and understand. Oh, that's a little bonus feature. I won't charge you for it, it's okay. But then the, the last one I just said is always use a third party escrow or an attorney to help you make the loans. It just keeps you safe and it keeps you protected. And that's what banks do. So to be the bank, mimic the bank and Best part about this whole thing is by you being the bank, you are taking back control of your money. Well, thanks for joining me for this video. And if you like this one, check this one out. The perfect investment strategy. Should you invest for the short term or the long term? I think you'll really like that one because it talks a lot about recycling and recapturing the money you're giving away. With that being said, thanks for joining us for another episode. See you next time.